Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the fourth of the fourth month, which happens to line up with the 15th of June on the Gregorian calendar for 2024. And we're continuing with our reading of Bereshit or Genesis in chapter 42. We just went through Yahusuf's captivity while he was in prison, and then the dreams that both the cupbearer and the baker had had, the chiefs of them, and then the corresponding events that had happened. Then the later dream of Pharaoh and the cupbearer remembering Yahusuf there and all that came about. So then Yahusuf was exalted and brought to the right hand of Pharaoh and all those things have happened that he foretold. So now... This is Yahusha's brothers sent to Egypt or Mitzrayim. It says, and he saw Yaakov for, or that substance there was, right? Grain. This is, yes, grain in Egypt or in, that's bet, be, Mizraim or Mizraim, Mitzrayim. So it's in Egypt, they call it, but in Mitzrayim. And he said, Yaakov, unto his sons, Lama, why? And this is a past tense with the Tau here, right? They have a double Tau, but Ra'u, this is look at him, right? Why do you look at one another? And he said, Hani, indeed, I have heard, past tense, that substance or there is grain in Egypt. Radu, this is like Jared, the name Yarad or Jared or like the Jordan, Yarden River is he will go down and that Resh Dalit is to go down. The Yod at the beginning means he is or he will and the Wa here is him or it, right? But go down it says Shema, that Shem, and then the hey, that's there. This is to that place. But remember, Shem means there or where you're at. So go down there to that place and buy. But it says, and Shavar, U, and to buy grain, right? Unto us, Lanu. There, Mishem, sorry. That we may live. Right? It says, and Nachaya, right? And we shall live and not die. Namut. Now you see, they put the noon there as an action, like the lightning bolt of the thing you're doing. And then this is literally to die or death. And this is literally life. Thank you, sisters. Our sister shared Yobelim chapter 6, verse 26. The first of the fourth month is the mouths of the depths of the abysses beneath were closed. So the waters were no longer filling up from the bottoms. So thank you for that. It says, Wa Yaradu, and he went down. Ahi, the brothers of Yahusuf, 10. Unto buying grain in Mitzrayim. It says, but, it says, wa'ata, wa'et, sorry. Ben Yamin, Aki Yosef, the brother of Yahusuf, lo, shalach, not, did he send. The uh, taught ones, they call them apostles, right? They're also known as emissaries. In the Hebrew, it would be shaliachim. It's the shalakim. You pluralize the sent ones. That's what they are. To send, shalak. This word came down in English is like to shalak. Uh, a table is where you sit and the soap scuds out. And you're shalaking it. That's something we still have. It's archaic, but it's the only word. It's only usage of the word that I'm familiar with. 
in that capacity anymore. This is, but Benjamin, brother of Yahusuf, not to descend, Yaakov. Richard? Yes. Can you make that sound again? That was cute. Shalak? <laughs> Whatever you <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I make sound effects when I'm talking on occasion. I can't consciously do it. It, it just comes out. <laughs> I didn't even know I did that. Thank you, though. So, uh, Yaakov with, there's that et, and again, that's where they get the word with in English, because they mush mouth that with the Ephri, Ephraim, the Anglo-Saxons, if you will. The Gothics, the, the, the Gothic-speaking Germans that were in Persia and Madai that became part of the Parthian Empire there when they were migrating after the Persians had conquered them and destroyed the Parthian Empire and kicked them out, said convert or leave um, for their religion. Odin took them and went. They went to Asgard and went up. They have their whole history. And it's actually, it was known about in antiquity by believers. They've written books about these things. That's why I talk about it so freely. I'm not I, I didn't just come to these conclusions on my own. I literally read it where men much smarter than me, they've educated in the scriptures from their childhood. They've studied these things. They went out and did the archaeology. They went out and discovered these things. They learned the languages to read them. And then they wrote books about the stuff. So I, I'm taking the facts that they've discovered and I'm sharing with you things that I've read. I'm not just guessing this is where with came from and they they get that mush mouth the w for alephs and ions for the gothic or germanic speaking peoples that went to britain what we call ephraim and Manasseh, the half tribe that later separated and came to america and the word wood came from oud which was a burnt offering or what you would light up to to fire something right to burn um woden was from that but all the aleph and ayan words if you put a w in front of them you can find a lot of the english words there and i believe oh, i believe it might be in the two volume set of the missing links where that's mentioned in detail but i can't i can't don't quote me on that one because there's a few different books that have a lot of the english or the gaelic and then the Hebrew or the Aramaic Chaldean letters and the word, and then the definitions, and you can see that they're virtually identical. So I've read a lot of those books, but I've literally read it. It's not, I'm not just guessing, I'm not making the things up on my own, but it's stuff that you can still find for yourselves too. And I highly recommend everyone, if you have the inclination and free time, if you're very familiar with scripture, there's amazing resources that are our forefathers, the, the believers in the 1800s were discovering, writing about, and talking about. They were the fulfillment of the time of the hunters, where the emissaries were the fishers of men. The men that were spreading the good news throughout the world during the Reformation era were the hunters that were foretold, searching out the lost tribes everywhere they might be. And they literally wrote books about them, both of the fact that Ephraim and Menashe are Britain and America and the Commonwealth of the British nations there. And then the other tribes being present in other locations. All of these books are, lit are written. Not all of them are coherently in agreement with the facts of scripture. Some of them might be dogmatic and saying, well, these are the only people or these are the only people, but scripture proves otherwise. So I think if we keep an open mind, you can see that we're literally all over the world and there's evidence for it. Not that everyone in the world is the literal seed of Abraham, but that literally everywhere in the world, there's his seed represented somewhere. This is for said, right? And it doesn't say he, but Amar, the he is implied. It says for he said, least... Yikarenu, Yikrenu, right? Reenu, 
right? Least befall him harm. And that's mischief or evil or harm, a son. So he wouldn't let Benjamin go down, at least some mischief befall him, because he was the last son that he had of Rachel, his wife, and the son of his old age. Right? Why Yabu, right? And he went the sons of Yisrael unto buying grain. Bituch, right? That's um Bituch is where we get the word betwixt in English that became our word between. And it's translated as among here. But it means literally in the midst of or midst, which is where we get interior, middle, middle part, right? And where we get the word between in English. This is, and he went among or between those who journeyed for Hiya, for there was the famine in the land of Canaan. So they were traveling with a group that was all going down to Egypt. They were going in the midst of them that were going for grain because the famine was all throughout the land. And Yahusuf, he, the governor over the land, or over, yeah, over the land, who he sold to unto all the people. So, and it was Yahusuf who was the, was the governor. And he was the one, it says, to buy grain, right? But you put the hay is the, and the mem is the means of, or the place through which. So he's the means of buying grain, which is the one who sold it. That's how they translate that, okay? To all the people of the land, right? And he came him, the brothers of Yahusuf, and bowed down before him with their faces. Aretza, and that's to the ground or the, the earth, literally the dirt. <laughs> and he saw Yahusuf, eth, uh, his brothers, right? And he recognized them. This mem means them. And right there is the wa, the yod is he, and then the kaf, resh, is the word that he recognized them. You'd put a noon in front of it, nekar, to regard or recognize. All right. It says, and he, but he acted as a stranger. It's the same word, however, with the Tao there. It says, and he recognized unto them, but it says, and he acted as a stranger to them. This is that to, that toward is Aleph Lamed, like Elohim, but El Yehem is them. That's another way of saying them instead of just having the mem. Wayidabar, and he spoke atem with them roughly, hard or severe. And he said to them, from Ain, it says from where, but from none, from not do you come, is literally what it says. Ain, they say, is whence. Okay. So from whence do you come? And they said to him, from the land of Canaan unto Bain, grain for food. And he recognized, or so recognized Yahusuf with his brothers, or it means he recognized his brothers, but they not the recognize him, right? And he remembered Yahusuf at the dreams which he dreamed, right? If you remember, they'd all bowed down to him, which they had just done. 
And so he remembered the dreams which he had dreamed unto them or about them. And he said to them, spies, but that me regalem, literally the means of the regulars, that's the place of putting your feet or your regular path, the route that you take. We'll see it later on in um, Shemot or Leviticus, actually, when you go to the three feasts where they go up to Yerushalayim, it's to the three regalim right here the three regular things that they were supposed to do but means means to go about on foot regal it's where we get I, i've mentioned it before regular regulations royal um regalia for royalty right and re, you know regis regulus the foot of the lion constellation there latin if you haven't realized is another perverted mixed language with hebrew and sons of yefeth that were indigenous to the area that they intermingled with but you can still see the hebrew in a lot of the latin words as well which there are also books covering that um i've mentioned it before I believe we have some videos that cover it, but we've never gone over it in detail. The ancient history of Caledonia takes a group of Hebrews from Egypt to Turkey, Troy, right? To Crete, from Crete to Sicily, from Sicily to... Uh, I believe they went from there to... Not Spain, they skipped that but then went um, up to Montrose, what we'd call uh, Scotland in the uh, United Kingdom there. And they had lived there from that time until the 1390s, or I'm sorry, the 1290s, when the secession wars happened with Edward Longshanks. And then we have modern history take over. But... Um, the point is, you can find the, the evidence. They have books written about the ancient Gaelic and its, its, um, its connection to the Hebrew. And then that particular Gaelic that's spoken in the Scotlands, uh, its influence on ancient Greek and ancient Latin. So the very phenomenon you can read in the history there. You can also read books that were written that corroborate that the languages also traveled with them. Point being, if you look into Latin, you'll see some Hebrew words like regulus is Latin for the foot there. But regel right here is Hebrew. And that's where it came from. So it says, and he said to them, spies you are, right? Unto seen with the nakedness of the land, right? That ara, ar, arva, they say, but that va here would be modern Hebrew. Before the Babylonian captivity, the wa never made the v sound. It was only the bet on occasion. It says, to see the nakedness of the land you have come. And they said to him, no Adonai, or no my master. And your servants, or but your servants, have come unto buying grain for food. And it says, all we, the sons of the one man, right? It says, kolnu b'nei ishechad. Right, so we're all the children of Bene. This is the Sere with the two dots. If it was a Hiric or just one dot, it would be Bene. So it would be my son. But because it's Bene, you pronounce it with the A sound. It means children of or sons of, depending on the context there. If it was Benote or Benote, I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to look at it to see how you pronounce it right for, for the feminine version. But that would be only daughters. Exclusively. 
If it's mixed, it's still, it's always the masculine. But it says, all us, the sons of one man, we are, right? Honest, we are, right? Anachnu, that means we or I, right? We, Anachnu. But it says, honest, truly, thusly, can, remember this is yes, so thus, we are not are your servants spies, right? It says, but he said to them, no, for the nakedness of the land you have come to see. And they said, two, ten, your servants, or basically twelve are your servants, brothers, we are the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, the youngest, the hiketon, that that cute, right? It means little. To be cute is to be small, right? Keton, young, small, unimportant, insignificant. It's what Yahusif, or not Yahusif, it's what Yaakov was when he was the younger, and Edom, or Esau, the elder, he was the cute one, or the Keton. This is, and in fact, the youngest with our father today, right? And one is no more. I knew. And he said to them, Yahusuf, it or he which I spoke, that, it's like he, who means he, but it also means it, right? Or if they have hahu with the hay in front of it, it means the, it, or the he, which they translate as that. that that's how the language uses those particular words, just so you're familiar. It says, but said to them, Yahusuf, it is as I spoke to you, right, unto them, saying, spies at them, you are, right? right in this manner or in this literally hereby in it likewise right the other one same so much it's just saying ah, so by this here by this literally it means in the oat in it or in this you shall be tested by the life of pharaoh not you shall go forth right this is to be expelled, right? By this, except if, except on the condition of whether in coming your brother, the youngest, here, Hini, which is to hither, right? Sihu, or send him of you one and let him bring eth your brother and you shall be kept in prison that may be tested your words right the, the words of them ha emeth whether the truth is in you wa am and if and if on the condition of not by the life of pharaoh surely spies you are so he put in that's because he's trying to have them prove the very thing they said, and he's going to be able to see his brother. But now they have to do the very thing that they're not wanting to do. So it kind of comes back on their head. And again, when we get to the testaments of the 12 patriarchs not too long from now, you'll see a little more inside about what was going on here with why he decided to do that, who he chose for being in prison and why and how it was deserved. All of that's kind of explained in the nuances behind the scenes in what is apocryphal or hidden in those writings. It says, so he put all together them in or to prison three days. And again, these things are significant. They're all parallels for things. Right In the second day, he will revive us. and the third, he will lift us, lift us up, and we shall 
be with him. I believe it's in Hosea. Our Mashiach, three days. There's a significance when you look at that with the beloved or Dawid in his narratives as well. These are all trying to point towards the same kind of concept there. And said to them, Yahusuf, in on the Yom Hashalishi, the third, this, that's that Zion Aleph Tau, the weaponed Aleph Tau is this, right? When you have it right here, or I'm sorry, when you have it where we just looked at it, there we go, with the mem there, it's by this right here, but that's not the one, where was it? They had it translated a little bit differently. I, I pointed it out to you then. I can't find it. I'm sorry. I don't want to take too long. Oh, here we go. In this, right? And they put in this manner. So it still means this, but bet means in. You can see how it's used. Maybe that one was it. All right. Continuing. <clears throat> I just want you to see the different letters in front of it are different prefixes and suffixes. When they do stuff like that, it means on, in, with, among, but it's not the same kind of with as being upon something. So there's different connotations. However, when you look at the pictures of things and you really get to the essence of what it is, it's a house and it's a what you do with the house. You're in it, it's with you, you're among it, right? That, that kind of concept is how it's used in a word too. Same thing with the Aleph and what the Aleph does and how it's used as I am or I will as an intent of an action, right? But anyways, he says, and he said to them, Yahusuf, in the day the third, this do you, right? Do him and live. Eth the Elohim, I fear, so he's telling him he fears the Elohim, right? Ha Elohim, Hale, Ha Elohim is the title that if you've been with us for a while, he's called that throughout, yes, the book of Yona. There's another three days and three nights reference. Thank you. But um, the Elohim is a title that's used all the way back from the beginning in Genesis. And it's always speaking of the father and the capacity of working through his son as he appears to men, the Elohim. At least that's the context that we found it in every reference so far that we've covered from Genesis to now. There may be different references later on. Context will give us the key there. But this Ha Elohim is always in reference to the father through his son appearing to men. So it says, if honest, or if thus or truly you are, right, of your brothers, one let be confined, or he, he will confine, right, in the house of imprisonment, but you, Lako, go, and carry, or, and come him the grain for the famine of your houses. So basically he said, leave one with me and the rest of you go and take grain for your families and then come back with the brother to prove yourselves, right? And your brother, the youngest, bring to me, so will be verified. Amen. Thus, so be it, right? That's what amen means, to confirm or support. And thus he will confirm him your words and know you shall die. And they did so. And and he did, right? And he did, Ken, so thus truly. And they said man to his brother. So, and they spoke each man to his brother is how they tra translate that in the KJV, I believe. But now they just have one to another here. 
when this isn't another, this is his brother, literally. So this is very sloppy translation, in my opinion, because these are not the words that are actually here. This is a man's, this is one. But anyways, it says, and they said man to his brother, Havel, truly, Abel, verily of a truth. Okay. And it says, however, nevertheless, no, and that would be more accurate because that is literally without. So I'm without. Nevertheless is how they translate that. But Beli Ya'al is literally without. Bet Lamed Ayin is to be without. And then the other one's um, worth. It's literally worthlessness, and that's a title for Satan, Belial or Belial in the Greek. <clears throat> so this is truly Ashamim, guilty we are, hearing. This is Ashem, maybe where you get shame from, huh? Ashamed. How interesting. To be guilty is to be ashamed, right? Truly guilty we are upon our brother, for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us, not did we listen. Upon thus has come, or upon thus has come upon us. So because of how they did to their brother, the famine and the situation and all the stuff that is, is now upon them. They're acknowledging what they are ashamed of and they're acknowledging the truth of what they did. They're now reaping the consequences of. This is, uh, thus has come upon us that this has, uh, has out, right? This distress. And he replied, or he answered Reuben them and said, Did not I speak unto you, or to you, unto saying, Not do sin against the boy, against the lad, and not would you listen? Therefore his blood, behold, is required. Nidras, right? To resort to or seek. Darash. His blood is sought or required, right? But they not did know that comprehended or Shema Yahusuf. For an interpreter, he spoke to them. So he, they didn't know that he comprehended them because he spoke through an interpreter. And he turned himself away from them. Wayabak. Wayebek, right? Bakbuk is the, the place of weeping, right? Or uh, Bekin, I can't remember. Judges chapter 2, Bokim, there we go, is the place of weeping. And that's what that word means right there. It says, and he returned to them and talked with them. And he took, or, or he got from them, Eth Shimon, and he bound him with him before their eyes, or unto their eyes, right? And Yazu was saw, they say, this is a command right here. It, it, it's za, they'd have a hey at the end sometimes as well, right? Za, but it's to lay charge, to give charge, command, or order. This is, and he commanded Yahusuf then, then to fill eth their sacks bar with grain. This word bar is also a word for pure, clean, and uh, it's an Aramaic, they say, word for son. Like a child, a male child, a son. It's in Psalm 2, 
when it says kiss the sun, least he be enraged and you perish in the way, that's the word bar there. <clears throat> this is in. It says he commanded their sacks with or to fill their sacks with grain. Sorry about that. And to restore the silver of every of every man to his sack. That's the sack of him, literally, sacco. And to give them provisions for the journey or unto the way, literally, laderic. And he did for them thus. He did unto them, Ken, truly. So they loaded at the grain upon or on the donkeys, and they departed and they went from there. <clears throat> it says, and or but as opened one at his sack. So it says, and he opened one his sack, right? Sorry about that. Lost my place. Here we go. Sorry about that. And then it says, and he opened. That word for pay, petach, is to open, right? Like pathak is how they pronounce it in the... Um, modern hebrew but it means to be open and it's also one of the vowels um, or accent marks i believe or one of the vowel pointing things you have a path back that you can use for um, inflection actually this line right here i'm sorry is the path back and it makes the ah sound for the vowel this is andy opened one at his sack to give feed to his donkey or unto this donkey at the lodging and he saw at his silver well and there it was in the mouth of the sack so he said and it says and he said to his brothers has been restored my silver wagam also, moreover, or yea, they just have it translated as and. And also, there it is in my sack. And failed their hearts and they were afraid. Right? That harad. So they were afraid. One to another, or one, each man to his brother, saying, "What, What is this that is done, Elohim, to us? You know, what has Elohim done to us? And they went to Yaakov, their father, in the land of Canaan, and told, right, Gid, and they related unto him, at all hakrat, that it happened at them, to them, or with them, unto saying, spoke the man, the master of the land, to us, roughly. And he took us for spies at of the country. And he said, or but we said to him, honest we are, right? Not we are spies, right? We, never we are spies. Twelve we are. It says literally two, ten, right? Twos and ten. But it says, twelve we are, brothers, the sons of our father ha achad one and it says no more one is no more and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of canaan so he's trying to explain what they said to him while they were there and he said to us the man the master of the land by this i will know that honest you know honest you are with me right of your brothers, one leave with me, and with the famine of your households, take and go, and bring eth your brother, the youngest, to me, 
so shall I know. And it says, and I will know that not our spies you are, for honest at him with me. All right, so honest says you are with your brother. It says, I will grant, or at 10, they say I will grant here, but that's literally to give, put, or set, Nathan. But Aleph is the I will. So I will set, or I will put, I will give to you, talking about the grain, right? It says, I will give to you and in the land you may trade. Saying, so they uh, kept one of the brothers, they were able to trade and then get food for their families. And it came to be, as they emptied their sacks, it says that surprisingly, but, and behold, each man's bundle of silver in his sack. And when at the bundles of silver they saw, and their father, and he was afraid him, or and they were afraid, and said unto them, Yaakov, their father, to me, or, to me you have bereaved, Yahusuf is no more, and Shimon is no more, and Benjamin, you want to take against me are all these things. And spoke Reuben to his father, saying, Eth Shani Bene, so with my two sons you may slay. You can kill them if not, I bring I do bring back to you. Right? Now he's offering, you can slay my two sons if I don't bring your son back to you. And that was an intolerable thing for him, his father to agree to. All right. Because he doesn't want more senseless death to attribute to anything. He wants the promise of return. So when Yahuda said his own life for him, that was the kinsman redeemer. That was a foreshadowing of, the, of that and the reason why the kingdom was given to him for one of the reasons, if you will. But we'll see that in just a moment. This is... <clears throat> It says, if not, I do bring him back to you. Put him in my hands, and I will bring him back to you. And he said, no, he shall go, my son, with you, for his brother is dead, and he alone is left. And if I, or and if should befall him any harm along the way, which you go, in then you would bring down my gray hair in sorrow to the grave, or Sheol which is literally, they, they call it the underworld here. But Sheol, literally, it means the grave, the place of burial. It doesn't necessarily always mean the context of the underworld. But the cave in Mikpalah was where they were buried. When you go into the grave, it's where you're, you're put after, your, your, your body's put when you're dead. And then it also has the, the resting place of the inner being, which there's a dwelling place for the righteous and the unrighteous, as some of you may be aware. And if you're not, we'll certainly get to it in time. But uh, with that being said, I think we covered what we can here today. So you all have a wonderful Shabbat. Next week, we'll continue with the, the return into Egypt, Father willing, and the culmination of brothers reuniting the recognitions of those that were forgotten now being rediscovered and then all of that and what it entails with their benefits there. So thank you for your time. You have a wonderful rest of your Shabbat, a great week ahead, and we will see you next time.